A farmer understands the needs of every season, and so do Farm Bureau members. When Arkansas families needed electricity, our members brought it. Reliable roads, our members built them. The agricultural education, our members provided. Today's members may not live on a farm, but their connections are as close as ever. So when that difficult season comes, no member has to face it alone. For every season, Arkansas Farm Bureau. Join today. If you're tired of Republicans and Democrats, there may be an alternative for you in this election cycle. Libertarian candidate for Governor Frank Gilbert and Green Party nominee Josh Drake join me for a freewheeling conversation about their candidacies. Gentlemen, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you. Thank All you right. for having us. Josh, I'm going to come to you first on uh, this question here. Give me a little bit of your bio. Keep it short and sweet, but tell people a little bit, don't know anything about you, who you are, and why you're running for governor. Well, I'm, I'm an attorney by education. I, I went to Rhodes College undergraduate and University of Georgia Law School, moved to Arkansas a little over 20 years ago, and been practicing law in Hot Springs and surrounding counties for the last 20 years. Um, got involved in politics in, uh, when I, after moving to Arkansas, I started paying more attention. Um, my undergraduate degree is in political science, so I was naturally interested in the political process. And uh, couldn't find a cure for that, so uh, you just decided to feed your addiction. That's right. Gravitated to the Green Party, and <laughs> I've, I've run for Congress uh, a few times, and this time uh, I'm running for governor. Um, one of the main reasons that Frank and I are both running is the definition of a political party in Arkansas is the, the party that receives at least 3% in the governor's race. And so if the Libertarians or the Greens receive 3% of the governor's race, we become an official political party and we won't have to spend our money and resources getting signatures every year just to get on the ballot. And so we will gain what's called ballot access if we receive 3% in the governor's race. And, and so I trust there's some issues that you've got some uh, points to make on too, and we're going to come to that. Frank, how about you? Why are you, a little bit of your bio and why you're running for governor. Just uh, been involved in par uh, party politics most of my life. I started out as a Republican, was elected coroner in Grant County where I live. And uh, if you ever have a chance to serve the citizens of your community as coroner, don't. Uh, it's one of those jobs, I'm glad somebody does it. I'm glad I don't have to anymore. Mm -hmm. And then after that, ran as an independent for mayor of Tull and was elected. And then in 2012... Now, you've got to tell people where Tull is in respect to Sheridan, at least. Tull so. is in the center of the universe. Oh, it is, uh, <laughs> it's about halfway between Sheridan and Benton. Okay. Out in the country, nice place to live. And then uh, after doing two terms there, I believe in term limits, and term limited myself, and uh, took some time off from politics before running again in 2012, and was elected as the first libertarian uh, to a partisan office in the state of Arkansas. And that office was? Constable there of the DeKalb Township. Of, there you go. And why, why governor this time around? For the 3%. Mm -hmm. It just looked like uh, a great opportunity for us to save some money and be able to put our efforts into actual direct electoral politics and uh, the Libertarian Party had a great three-way race for the governor's nomination and I lost. So, <laughs> you know. Well let's talk about uh, some issues and where you guys stand on some issues uh, particularly this week with news um, the minimum wage proposal has made the ballot. Uh, Josh where do you stand on that ballot proposal to raise the minimum wage to 850 over a three-year period? Well I support the I support the ballot initiative but I think it's uh, inadequate. I think we need more. I think we should shoot for a $10 minimum wage within the next two years. I think we can do it. I think it will spur economic development. It will increase uh, tax revenues. It will decrease dependency on things like food stamps. Uh, it'll allow some more workers to move out of poverty and into uh, uh, less dependence on on things like that. I, I think we need to push for it. I think we can do it. We can be a leader in the South. Uh, Arkansas can be seen as a progressive state that's leading instead of following. And I think it will attract business. I think it will uh, do a lot for our climate. It will show that we are forward thinking. We are, we are taking care of our hardworking people. And uh, I think it's just good for the state. And I think we can do better than 850 and we should shoot for 10. Frank, I got a feeling you got a different position on this <laughs> one. So. Of course. the. Uh, Minimum wage is probably one of the worst things we could do for poor Arkansans. If you continue to raise the minimum wage, you develop a gap, which new entries into the employment field have to cover. And uh, probably the most unkind thing we could do is pass that. We're going to pass it. It's just too popular. 
because we all have that desire to help those who are less fortunate. There are just a lot better ways to do it than with an artificial thing like the wave. Also in the last week, another initiative that has made the ballot, and Frank, I'll start with you on this one, is the alcohol expansion issue. Make all 75 counties wet counties uh, versus about half and half that we have wet and dry now. Grant County's a, dry. It's a dry county. What do you think about the alcohol expansion issue? I'm, I'm going to vote for that because the confusion that it creates in law enforcement and for those who are violating the law and don't know it, the truth of the matter is everybody in Grant County knows who the bootleggers are. And they're not making whiskey <laughs> anymore. They're bringing it in from Little Rock. And uh, we could stop it any time we had the guts to. Nobody wants to stop it. So uh, if we just go ahead and make it legal everywhere, then you don't have the selective enforcement that we sometimes get now. The college kid doesn't get treated the same way in Clark County as the local businessman does. Yeah. And I can remember in my Hendricks College days, Josh, I had a drinking man's guide to Arkansas. It was the combination of wet and dry counties on the t-shirt there. What about you on the alcohol expansion initiative? That's a tough issue. and, and uh, I, mean, I was interested in Frank's response because he's making me think about some things that I hadn't thought about. Um, generally speaking, I, I'm of the opinion that I don't see it as a, as a burning issue that, that each individual county shouldn't be allowed to decide on their own. Um, and so my first, my first thought is I don't see anything wrong with the current situation where if the people in the county want it, they can, they can vote for it. And, and I, a, a little bit worry about forcing it, but Frank brings up some good points. And so I think that's one of those issues that, um, that each individual voter is going to have to do some thinking about. Yeah. We hadn't polled that yet, so I don't really know what the public sentiment is on that, mm -hmm. at least from our perspective here. Let's talk about um, economy and jobs. What are, I mean, obviously a huge wide ranging topic there, but if you could kind of consolidate into one or two major things that you would want to do to stoke the economy, to grow jobs in Arkansas. It's the number one issue for a lot of uh, voters. What, what would you do, Josh? I think one of the things we need to do is be more forward thinking. Um, so, so oftentimes we're reactionary. Uh, we're thinking about short term job. You know, we're all for this because it means 50 jobs in the next six months. Whereas we need to be looking at how many jobs is it going to be six years from now. And so I think we need to be more forward thinking. And obviously that means education. Uh, one of the things we need to do in Arkansas is start leading the South instead of following, you know, the same, same with other issues. And so um, I think we need to think about our business climate. I think we need to uh, think about how issues interact. Uh, one of the big movements in Arkansas right now is open carry and stand your ground. And I think that hurts our, our ability to attract out-of-state uh, businesses. I don't think uh, the, the reputation of the Wild West with everybody carrying guns into Kroger is a way to get foreign companies here for sure. Uh, who, who oftentimes have very strict gun laws and certainly uh, companies from other parts of the country. So I think, think we need to think about economic development as it, as it uh, goes across all the issues and not just uh, do we give handouts to some companies to build a steel mill, you know, what, what are we going to have three years from now and what is the impact of those jobs? Uh, if, we, if we overly subsidize this area, are we going to create a need for more schools and more roads in this little area that can't handle it? Mm -hmm. Or shouldn't we target it in, the, in some areas where we have high unemployment, where we, where we already have infrastructure? And so I think we need to be more forward thinking in our economic development. And I think taxation is one of those issues also. We need a more progressive we'll tax come structure. Back to taxes here. All right, Frank, how about you on the economy and the jobs? The two things I would do before anything else is first eliminate the income tax in the state. We are at a competitive disadvantage to every state around us and uh, it does more harm than good in the long run. And the other thing is, is to do away with as many as possible of the boards and agencies that oversee and regulate business in Arkansas. Those two things cripple us mm -hmm. and that's where I would start. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When I come back, we'll talk taxes since you even brought them up in your answer there. I know you've got more to say on that. I am with Frank Gilbert. He is a Libertarian candidate for governor and Josh Drake, the Green Party candidate for governor. Back with more with both of these gentlemen after this word from our sponsors. As Arkansas's population grows, so do our energy demands. But with the right mix of resources, reliable, affordable power will always be a reality. These resources are all around us in our rivers, blowing through our trees, even right below our feet. 
the answer isn't focusing on one resource, it's embracing them all. The electric cooperatives of Arkansas know that a balanced approach to power builds our communities and powers our dreams. Visit themixmatters.com and see why there's power in knowledge. Welcome back to Talk Business and Politics. I'm Roby Brock. We're with Josh Drake, Green Party nominee for governor and Frank Gilbert, libertarian candidate for governor. Frank, I'm coming back to you. You talked about tax cuts. You want to eliminate the income tax as part of your jobs growth plan. What are you going to do to provide government services? The income tax makes up about 45 to 50 percent of state revenues. And the Advanced Arkansas Institute gives us a good start. Corporate welfare in Arkansas is, is a few hundred million dollars a year. And we can cut that back, and the average Arkie's not going to feel it. Uh, the fat cats who are getting it uh, aren't going to feel it that much either, and they don't deserve it anyway. Uh, I would go as far as doing things like selling the governor's mansion. That's kind of a symbolic thing. But there are a lot of things that we can do to cut the state's uh, cost would of operation. Would it be incremental? Would you phase it out over time? Would you do it all at one I think you would have to. You know, if, if I had a switch, I'd throw it. There's those 135 guys in the legislature. They're not going to go along with that in, instantly. But I think in the course of two terms, eight years, that's not a whole lot of money. It's a possibility. Sure. All right. You brought up taxes as well. Should we be raising them or should we be cutting them? I think we should be raising them uh, to some extent. The, the, same, the person, the family making $50,000 a year in Arkansas pays the same percentage of taxes as the family making $5 million. And I don't think that's fair. I think we need to uh, a more fair tax system. Mike Ross has come out with a, with a fairly progressive tax reform uh, plan that, that I don't have a lot of disagreements with until it gets to the top. He wants to cut taxes on everyone, which doesn't make sense to me. The people that are making the money, that are doing the best, they can more afford uh, to pay a higher percentage of their taxes because this economy um, this economic environment that we have is obviously good for them. And so uh, they're making plenty. And so we need to reform the tax code, but we need to increase the taxes. And we need to increase the taxes on people that are, that are doing the, the best. And I think like that, Frank right here. So and Frank, I think that's, raise your taxes. If, if we're going to, that's right. I, I <laughs> certainly would. Uh, well, I don't know what Frank makes. He's probably, uh, he might actually get a tax cut. But, um, <laughs> but the one tax I would do away with, or a worker will do away with, is the sales tax because it's so regressive. Um, and it hurts the people, the hardworking people that are working 40 or 50 or 60 hours a week and spending every dime they make on groceries and fuel and rent and, and education for their kids and clothes and so forth. They spend everything that they put it back in the economy. They make this economy go. They make Arkansas go. They make Arkansas work. Those are the people that we should look at, given the break, the people who are working so hard and spending every dime they get. Sales tax is the easiest one to raise, though, because it takes the fewest number of votes in the legislature to do it, which is That's part of the reason it's gotten where it's gotten. Let's, let's talk about you guys obviously are running as alternatives to the Republican and the Democratic candidates. Tell me why. Give me one good thing or two good things that you're different from the Republican or the Democratic candidate. Well, I'm the only candidate that's pro-choice. I'm the only candidate that believes in progressive taxation and since of raising taxes on people everyone else is calling to either do away or to lower taxes. I'm the only one that believes in reasonable gun control and regulation. I'm the only one that believes in a $10 minimum wage. I'm the only candidate that believes in universal health care. I'm the only candidate that believes in clean energy, getting away from our coal-powered uh, power plants and moving toward clean energy. And so uh, Frank and I are the only candidates that believe in marriage equality. We're the only candidates who, who believe we need to reform our drug laws. And so there are big differences between me and all the other candidates, and there's also big differences between us and the two, party, the two main party candidates. Frank, I'll let you speak for yourself. Absolutely, and I, I don't take any exception with what Josh said, though. The, the Democrats have uh, ignored their base. There are, there are hundreds of thousands of Arkansans who are upset with the Democrat leadership for the way they've positioned the party on both marriage equality and drug enforcement. And I believe that we're a good alternative for Democrats. And likewise, the Republican base has been ignored and stepped on by their leadership in things like Common Core and the private option, where I believe Common Core is, is probably not a bad agenda. It is its implementation as something that the gods in D.C. provide us and we worshipfully accept and disseminate. Local control of schools is important to lots of Arkies. For that reason, I'd love to see us have vouchers where every parent could have a choice of where their children went to school. 
Likewise, the private option Republicans ran <laughs> as if Mr. Obama was here in the state and they were campaigning against Obama and Obamacare. Mm -hmm. They took over the House, they took over the Senate, and they immediately implemented it, expanded it, and added cost to it. Mm -hmm. Wow. You'd do away with it. I would do away, I would do anything I could to do away with it. There's a lot of it that's mandated in federal law, mm -hmm. and we'll have to rely on some libertarians in the legislature in D.C. to do that. Are there a few of them about to make their way in there? Of course, we just don't know when. <laughs> what about you on the private option? Josh, I hadn't heard your position on that. I believe in universal health care. It's the Green Party's position that we should basically have Medicare for all. And uh, all the successful nations of the world that are, that, are, that are performing well and have booming economies and are growing have universal health care. And I think you know, health care is a human right, and that's something that we as a society should, uh, should work to have for all our citizens. And so I, I'm for the private option, but I would go further and, and have universal health care for, for everyone. Mm. All right, and I got a challenge for both of you guys, because this is one of my complaints about the third party candidates, not only in this race, but in the Senate race and some other races too, is you got to communicate with us in the media. You guys don't consistently crank out press releases that allow us to understand your position on things. It's difficult to track everybody down when we've got deadlines and the, the pace of what we have to report. So I'm challenging both of you guys to add me at least to your media distribution list. And when a candidate makes some sort of comment and you want to respond to it, if you'll send a comment or at least make yourself available for the comment, uh, I promise I will include you uh, in our stories on that. But it's difficult to round all that up. So tell, why, why, are we, why do we not have bigger campaign apparatuses from you guys, at least for the, the point of distributing a free press release? I mean, that, that didn't cost much money. I think there are two reasons. It costs something. It costs time. Somebody has to donate the time, if not the money, to make that happen. And the other is that, frankly, the efforts that I've made have been less than successful. Now, I guarantee you, I've never sent it to you, <laughs> but I can, I can show you dozens and hundreds of things I've sent out you and had out to nothing. the wrong political well, reporter. I guarantee you. And I think I, I agree with what Frank said is that we've been ignored for so long. Rasmussen, who's one of the you know, so-called reputable polling people, they just released a poll, and the question they asked people were, are you voting for Mike Ross or Asa Hutchinson? That was the question. They didn't even mention the fact there's two other people on the ballot. And then the media reported that as a valid poll. Well, when people walk into the voting booth and there are four options, and a poll is taken where they're only given two options, that's not scientific. All the talk business interest college polls have you guys in there ever since your candidacies were declared. So you're welcome. All right, I appreciate that. Yeah. All right, Frank Gilbert, Josh Drake, thank you both for being here. This will be online for anybody who wants to watch it afterwards, so promote it, and we'll be talking as the campaign continues. Thank, thank you. you. All right.